Hello everyone and welcome to another episode in my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5 and after editing the last episode I realized that I really needed to work on a launcher to get stuff into low earth orbit. Uh, the, my haphazard attempt to edit the Forseti launcher and turn it into what ended up being a Dellinger heavy launcher was horrible and of course that's because the Forseti launcher was meant to launch things to the moon and it's very good at doing that. In fact, uh, even though the payloads didn't always work out the way I wanted to, the launcher itself did. It did get its payloads to uh, translunar injection that did all that stuff. So it was very good for that, but it was just impossible to edit it, ed uh, change it properly, modify it properly in order to suit getting heavy payloads into Earth orbit. Now, that means that what I've done is create a new launcher. Not entirely different from the Forseti. We've still got the little um, SRBs. We've still got the two LR87s at the bottom. But in the second stage now, we have four of the RL10s, four of these guys, RL10A3s. Okay, uh, they are running liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen. And so they're there and they will be our second stage. I've also increased the diameter of the stages to 3.5 meters so they're bigger now and that is partly also because of our payload which I'll keep shrouded this time because I don't want to mess with this and this is you know I think it's probably the first time in the series that I've built stuff off camera and that's because I really wanted to think about this and you can probably calculate for yourself if you take a look at the stages that get the payload into orbit it's pretty much smack dab 9500 meters per second which is what we need to get into low earth orbit also it's pretty efficient the payload is 8.6 tons and that's about four percent of the launch mass which is what I consider to be pretty good now the payload itself is the docking and refueling module for the station. The fuel that's added in is MMH M204, which happens to be what both the RCS ports and the one uh, kilonewton rockets. Uh, let me get those. These guys, these thrusters uh, work on MMH M204, and uh, the RCS ports. These can also be configured for that. So. So yeah, that's what I've got going, and I hope it works out. Otherwise, we're gonna be in trouble. I don't know. Uh, this says engine configs at the top, and then RCS FX at the bottom. And RCS FX thinks that this can only run in hydrazine. I hope that just means that I don't get RCS FX without hydrazine, but I can still run them on MMH N204. But yeah, we'll see. And so the goal is to rendezvous uh, the module with the station, and this will be Pratchett Station Module 2. And then we'll have all sorts of new docking ports, uh, plenty of extra lights, some more electric charge. You can see the battery on it is 52,000, and that's partly because it doesn't have uh, solar panels. I wasn't able to add, well, I decided not to add solar panels to this portion. So, yep. That is our situation. And without further ado, I think, I hope I've got all the staging right, and I think we're ready for launch. Okay, so here we are. I should note that the tanks in the top are a little bit short. I, I filled them up to about 80%, so you see that the MMH isn't completely full. And that's because I decided that uh, this launcher wouldn't be able to take the 10 tons. It was able to take the 8.6 tons, so I went with that. Now, what I want to do is rendezvous with our station. Oh, by the way, I checked, and I think the other satellites have enough hydrazine to deorbit. So that could be a thing. And so set as target. You know, we're not too bad. That is, uh, let's just check that it's in line with the lunar orbit. And then we'll know whether it's really Pratchett Station. Yes, it is. I think I think we could just go. I mean, it seems like we're under it, right? 
not entirely surprising that things shouldn't have moved around too much since I launched that portion. Okay. Um, we've, we've got the target. Uh, let me do the whole thing with uh, MechJeb Rendezvous Planner. I just want to be able to see our relative inclination and make sure we minimize that. Okay, and we're going to get into a lower orbit, obviously, and then we'll boost up in order to rendezvous. Okay, now this is a new launcher, and I haven't tested it. It's also a little bit fat, as you can see, but we'll hope for the best. Uh, but be, be prepared for the worst. Unfortunately, it's just docking ports and, uh, and a fuel tank. All right, here we go. It's amazing how expensive those launch clamps are, by the way. Okay, those are off. Everything's looking good so far. We do have three degrees of gimbling on this, these rockets. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Why is the ship value going up? Okay, that's a bit strange. Hmm, something wrong here. Something very wrong there. We'll have to look at the ship values some other time though. Uh, well, I guess I could bring it up. Well, let me not interrupt my flow here. Could bring it up, but uh, that would really make this whole thing crowded. Okay, I'll dispense with fairings now. Let's hope that works out. Okay. And I'm happy to have done that because those were quite ugly. And so this is our module that we're sending up. Oh, you know what I forgot? A decoupler. Oh, nuts. Well, let's just make sure that the rocket works out. And we'll worry about the decoupler afterwards. Let's just make sure the whole launch can work as intended. It might still work out. I, I don't know. Whoa. Okay. Ooh, bit of a wiggling. Hmm. SAS. Stop that. Uh, I think I might need to increase gimbling on these. I don't like this. This definitely needs some work. I think it's the gimbling on the outer engines. And let's see. Let me. And 
And let me take off gimbling on the inner one. There we go. Now, let's get a little bit more gimbling on the inner one, actually. Just... <sighs> not great, not great. It's not like we have huge G-forces, this is just SAS, I think. So I see the coupler here, I just hope it works properly. It might Oh, it might have just wanted to eject the nose cone. I, I don't think it'll eject this. But I want to see whether we get into orbit properly or not first. Okay, we're basically at our apoapsis and still burning. We've got another minute to burn. And I'm just tilting up a little bit in order to make sure that we don't actually reach our apoapsis. This is a fair game to play if you can get it. And I think it's going well. So basically I'm trying to keep myself about two seconds away from apoapsis. I'm obviously also simultaneously trying to reduce my inclination with respect to the station. Now, of course, I don't have too much hope that I'll be able to separate the payload, but I'm just trying to make sure that I can do this properly. New launcher and everything. Okay, here we go. Well, that would have been excellent if this now worked. Right, not gonna work. And I suppose... Oh, no, that worked! Oh, okay, great! Alright, uh, well, now we need some RCS to help us out here. We don't have a reaction wheel on this. Uh, fortunately, the copious RCS will hopefully help out. But I'll let it drift for now. I need to plot the... Plot what we're gonna do. Okay, well, we managed to separate thanks to the fact that this is a docking port. That's interesting. Uh, I guess I can uh, ignite the... Those guys. Okay, so now just floating around. And I'll come back to you once I've figured out how I'm going to intercept the station. Okay, so I've plotted a uh, uh, inclination change to match inclination, and even though it's just 0 0.6 degrees, it's going to cost 79.6 meters per second. And after that, tried to plot a maneuver to intersect, though that seems to be costing a lot more than I thought it would, and it's not very consistent. It blinks in and out, it's... I'm almost tempted to let Mechjeb do it, and uh, now you can see it goes to 2100, and then uh, it doesn't really want to give it to me. And the closest it gives me is 55, which isn't right. There's no way that's the best I can do. Uh, what would Mechjeb do? <laughs> It, it, it does it at this about the same place, uh, and it gets a 70 kilometer, so it actually does worse than me. 
strange. Okay, so first things first, let's do that, as this thing is still sort of not entirely controlled. Well, not controlled at all if I don't turn on RCS. I'll wait until we have to do the burn rather than... Oh, these are in the way. Oh, there we go. Okay, 33 minutes. I had already gone around the planet twice, by the way, so I did two orbits before getting to this point. Caught up with the station and everything. So you see we do have quite a few docking ports. We've got the 2 meter, we've got the 1 meter, we've got uh, another 1 meter there, and a 2.5 meter down there. So, plenty of stuff. Hmm. Well, let me just do it now while I've got everything on. It's gonna take a while. I'll catch you on the other side of this. Okay, we're getting close here. Okay. That's close enough for me. 0 0.02. What's that staticky sound? Sure, got that off. Let me. Okay, that was RCS. I don't like that sound. Okay, so now we've got that all settled. Uh, what would, what would Mechjeb do? Mechjeb would do something silly. This doesn't even seem where. Where am I supposed to intersect? I, I think Mechjeb is not doing very well. Uh, let's say I extend from out here. 10 kilometers. That might be the best I can do given the way it keeps blinking in and out. I'm using the scroll wheel, thanks to 23.5. No. I mean, really, with the inclination being so close, I should be able to just mash into it practically. Not be a whole kilometer off even. Three kilometers. One point seven kilometers. One point eight. Okay, well that's as much as I can do in that direction. One point five. Four. Okay, I'll take one point four. I doubt I'll really get that. Uh how much delta V? One twenty three. Okay. And we continue. Good thing we have a lot of electric charge to work with. And 25 minutes. I am looking at the Mechjeb separation at closest approach indicator. And that's that. Okay, we will deal with that 3.3 kilometers and hope that Mechjeb is right about that. Let me take off RCS so I can stop hearing that. Um, 39 minutes. Well, I guess I don't have to stay out here if I've got this display, though that worries me a bit. Mechjeb may or may not be right, I don't know. Let's keep it to target and hope we don't have too much to retro burn once we get there. Electric charge is holding fine. Let's go. Okay, well, let's... 
Yeah. Time to reorient so that we are ready to do a retro burn. Not retro burn, really. Uh, orbit matching burn. Okay. That is a lot of burning to do. Okay, um, I think we better start now. Do these things have gimbling on them or not? Uh, are you not? Okay, RCS then. Okay, that's good enough. And let us gently maneuver towards the other part of the station, Module 1. Okay, that should be good enough for now. Oh, I forgot to mention the name of the launcher that I created, VAR, is the Norse Goddess of Contracts. And I thought that the Norse Goddess of Contracts would be an appropriate name for a launcher. Especially one that is vaguely about the right size to take on normal contracts. So, yep. That's, that's where I got the name from. Okay, before I get irritated by the RCS, let me let it just our vector properly and then I'll take it off so yeah that's that now oh we've got that jumping thing anyway okay things are deviating quite a lot very quickly aren't they I'll just look at this separation and closest approach I think that'll help it's been a long time since I've used that I used to use it a lot Okay. Oh, heck. See, now it, it jumped to 2.2, .2, and that's not fair. Um, yeah, it, it just doesn't play nice. I, I think I should just not time warp. Wait, but I said not time warp. Okay. Okay, so time warping in Earth orbit seems to be a bad idea. So I'm gonna take RCS off and then I'm just going to depart from the computer for about eight minutes it looks like. And I'll be back with you once we get closer to the target. Okay, so we'll get to 41 meters. I don't dare time warp though because that will likely launch me about a kilometer away. So uh, future plans. Now obviously we've been needing some satellites around the moon in order to communicate with missions there. But I think that what we're gonna do first is actually send something similar or exactly the same as the first module of the Pratchett station over to the moon. and that will have all the antenna that we need obviously and more importantly you'll have supplies and the docking port so that's one thing I think I'm thinking that uh, that first module could probably fit atop the Forseti launcher and the Forseti launcher could bring it to the moon safely so we'll take a look at that and if we have to shed weight on the, the that module we will but then we can start out building a moon station and that'll be interesting and then of course after we get that over there we'll also have to add supplementary satellites to it so that it really can have a full communication network 
And each of those will... Well, we'll see. We'll see. Fortunately, with this, we can modify this to expand its capabilities, so... Makes it very useful. So basically, I'm holding off on interplanetary missions for a little bit and getting our moon situation all nice and neat. And then, of course, following that, I guess another landing on, attempt to land a probe on the moon would be the thing. We haven't really accumulated much science of late, so that should be a thing. But let's get that uh, first component of a lunar station over there, and then a few more satellites. Probably similar to the way I launched the satellites, uh, the four satellites into Earth orbit. I'll probably put the same pack atop a Four City launcher and send it over to the moon. Seems like uh, that would be a reasonable way to do things. May only three of them, and then we'll have some sort of a module, uh, some sort of a carrier module that can bring it into orbit. Because the Four City itself doesn't actually bring things into orbit around the moon. So some sort of carrier module will have to do that. Okay, now within three meters. Oh wait, time warp bad. <sighs> okay, I'm over here at the first module and I'm gonna try and Okay, well... Ah, there we go, finally. Aim it properly, that's all. And I'm gonna have it control from here. Very helpful. And it does have a reaction wheel, I believe. So that is good too. From here on out, I think I'll just leave the RCS on. Okay, maybe not. I really hate those that sound. Just very annoying. I'm sure it's very realistic and all, but just a little bit annoying. So we do have the time delay now. I did activate that so the moon mission should be really very interesting with the what is it two seconds yeah landing on the moon with a probe could get very dicey with that delay oh i didn't realize it actually read millimeters wow okay Okay, well, as everything can go... Well, no, SAS can stay on, actually. No need to have that on, and there we have it. Uh, we are... We've got a much more respectable start to our station. I don't know which way it'll go. Probably the station axis will be this side, but uh, we've got a huge docking port here, so maybe this will be the station axis and then we'll have stuff coming off on that side. For now, well, I mean for now it looks good and I'm going to retract this antenna because otherwise it will be in the way of anything trying to dock in any of these places. Yeah, so we have added to our space station only really our second orbital rendezvous of this series so that's good more practice there our electricity situation 
Well, we're on the dark side. Uh, it should be fine though, we've got like three days worth of electricity in this service module. Alright, so next time maybe we'll try to send one of these modules over to the moon. I think that would be a constructive way to go. Alright, so uh, on that note, if you enjoyed having the build part be off, off camera, then please say so, or if you'd rather have the build part remain a part of the episodes, please say that as well. If you don't have any strong feelings either way, it's fine. Uh, but uh, please do mention that in the comments so that I get an idea. It's technically easier for me to edit the episodes afterwards if I skip the building. So it's not really a great benefit to me to add the uh, build po portions. But it might be of interest to some viewers, so I'll, I'll leave that f as a topic of discussion. Other than that, uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.